Today we're going to talk a little bit about the causes of World War II, both in Europe and then we're going to discuss why the United States eventually decided to abandon neutrality and join in 1941. Before we begin, I'd like you to think about the answer to this question. If World War I was the war to end all wars, how could there possibly have been a World War II? In other words, when people were discussing World War I and talking about how terrible it was, it was also called the war to end all wars because uh, the world had never seen a war like that. So why would another war begin in just 20 years? To begin our discussion, we have to look at the long-term causes of World War II. The first thing we're going to discuss would be the failed attempts at peace. Here, I'm talking about the Treaty of Versailles that ended World War I. I'm thinking you probably already thought of this when I asked you the question for the warm-up. Um, the Treaty of Versailles after World War I completely destroyed Germany and um, took away all honor and dignity that Germany had. So there was a lot of resentment and hatred toward those allied powers. On top of that, in the 1930s, beginning with the stock market crash in 1929, a global depression hit, and inflation and unemployment went rampant all around the world. This really led to the rise of dictators, and we've discussed that last class all, all throughout Europe. When things are terrible and bad in your country, you're more apt to look to a strong leader to try to help you get out of that. And what happened in Europe was people turned to dictators and totalitarian-style governments. If you take a look at the picture in the upper right hand of your screen, you see a couple of kids playing with what look to be blocks. Those blocks are actually not blocks at all. They're German marks. In the 1930s, inflation was so bad in Germany that people, rather than use their money at stores, would give, them to their, give money to their children to play with, like blocks. In addition to this, people would heat their homes by putting the marks in the fireplace rather than uh, bringing their money to the store to purchase goods. With the rise of dictators came a new policy meant to keep the peace in Europe. Um, this is the policy of appeasement. And you defined this for your vocabulary, but appeasement means to give in to an aggressor in order to keep the peace, in order to maintain the peace. Um, if you remember correctly, I related this to a toddler wanting a lollipop in a store. Well, in this case, Adolf Hitler and the totalitarian leaders in Europe are, are the, that toddler. And instead of lollipops, what they want is more land and power. And rather than go to war, the world, primarily Great Britain, is going to allow them to continue taking land and power in order to avoid another war because the uh, memory of World War I is so fresh in people's minds. We have a couple uh, political cartoons here created to illustrate the idea of appeasement. The first one on the left hand of your screen shows an Adolf Hitler walking on the backs of the spineless leaders of democracy. And the caption says, stepping stone to glory. This cartoon is clearly saying that Adolf Hitler is walking all over those leaders of democracy in order to get what he wants, and they're just allowing him to by bending over. On the other side, this is a political cartoon created by Dr. Seuss. In the middle, you have a little man called the Appeaser. He's holding lollipops, and all around him are sea monsters who um, want those lollipops that he has. And the caption says, remember, one more lollipop, and then you all go home. And as we've discussed with the policy of appeasement, Hitler didn't just go home. He continued to take more and more land until World War II broke out. So that leads us to the immediate causes of World War II. We've talked about what Hitler was do doing in Europe, how he annexed Austria and um, took Czechoslovakia and was taking more and more land. And while he was doing that, the world was allowing him to through the policy of appeasement. Well, the last straw comes on September 1st, 1939, when Germany invaded Poland. Germany invaded Poland, which was a neutral nation, and um, 
This is the spark to World War II. When Germany invades Poland, Britain and France end their policy of appeasement and declare war on Germany. Just like there was a spark for World War I with the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, we're going to call this our spark for World War II. This is what be begins the fighting in Europe. So what was the United States doing during all of this? The United States officially declared neutrality before war even broke out. But in 1941, it became clear that Great Britain and the Allied powers needed help. Great Britain was the last standing democracy in Europe fighting when um, the United States decided to sign this Lend-Lease Act. And below you have a picture of Franklin Roosevelt, the president of the United States, signing this law. This law allowed the United States to provide the Allied powers with much needed money and supplies to continue fighting Nazi Germany and their enemies. Um, the Allied powers were in need of money, oil, tanks, machine guns, airplanes, and this allowed the United States to supply them with those things so that they could continue fighting and hopefully not fall to the Nazis. This is the first step in the United States joining the war. So why did the United States begin to fight? Why did we finally send troops over to Europe? On the morning of December 7th, 1941, Japan launched a surprise attack on the American naval base at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. This was a Sunday morning. 2,000 mostly sailors lost their lives. And the day after this sudden and deliberate attack, FDR asked Congress for a declaration of war in his most famous speech. Below you see some of the words from that speech. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. He's very clear in his intent. He wants the United States to go to war with Japan for causing this destruction in Hawaii. You have some pictures around a uh, newspaper headline in the corner. So why did Japan attack Pearl Harbor? Why did Japan attack the United States at all? We've been talking a lot about Germany, but not so much about Japan. Japan and Germany had an alliance, a military alliance. And so although America declared neutrality in 1935, when they signed the Lend-Lease Act in 1941, this was hurting the war effort in Europe, obviously, by giving the enemy supplies that's hurting the Axis powers war effort. Japan had begun to be very aggressive in the Pacific Ocean, taking land, and invading Manchuria, invading China, and the United States felt that this was wrong. So the United States imposed sanctions or cut off Japan's access to natural resources in order to hurt their war effort and stop their aggression. As you can see in the um, diagram in the lower right-hand corner, Japan lost 90% of its oil supply, crippling its military and its economy. Because of that, they had to retaliate. If you remember, Japan is an island nation with little to no natural resources. They have fish, they have mountains, they don't have much else. They need to trade in order to industrialize and conduct war. So Japan uh, answered this by attacking the United States at Pearl Harbor. You might be wondering why Pearl Harbor, why Hawaii? It's a clear choice for Japan. It's close, it's in the Pacific Ocean, and it houses the United States Pacific Naval Fleet. So it houses all of our battleships, many, many aircraft. And because of that, um, Japan is able to inflict a lot of harm to the United States with one action. Here we're just going to finish up by looking at a timeline to put this all into perspective for you. So in 1935, the United States sees Germany as being aggressive and they officially declare neutrality. We're in the midst of the Great Depression. We can't get involved in Europe's issues again. In 1939, World War II began when Hitler invaded Poland. In 1940, Roosevelt urged the American people to support the Allies. France falls to the Nazis in June of 1940. In 1941, the U.S. signed the Lend-Lease Act to provide military aid to Great Britain. 
June of 1941, Germany invaded the Soviet Union, which brought the Soviet Union, Union into the war on the side of the Allies. On December 7, 1941, Japan attacked Pearl Harbor. On December 8, Congress votes to declare war on Japan. And four days later, for the first time and only time in World War II, Germany declared war on another country by declaring war on the United States. We will continue this discussion tomorrow and um, look a little bit more closely at the attacks at Pearl Harbor. Have a great night.